my first duty to you today is to tell you what is happening to the climate. What is happening is cooling. <laughs> the ocean started cooling in 2003 and the atmosphere is following. There has been no warming since 1998. In fact, the temperature of the planet today is almost the same as it was when satellites first started measuring it in 1979. No one under the age of 32 has experienced global warming. Some of us predate that and remember the heavy frosts of the 1970s. Those frosts are returning. Solar activity is weakening and will remain weak for another 22 years. For Australia, climate is a non-problem. Carbon dioxide's heating effect is real, but minuscule. In the last 100 years, we've added about 100 ppm to the atmosphere. And that has heated the planet by 0.1 of a degree. We will add another 100 ppm by mid-century. The total of two tenths of a degree will be very welcome by 2050. In fact, the more carbon dioxide we add to the atmosphere, the better. During the ice ages of the last three million years, the CO2 content of the atmosphere got down as low as 172 parts per million. Plant growth shuts down at 150 parts per million. Life above sea level was almost wiped out due to a lack of carbon dioxide. We were only 22 parts per million from extinction. We came so close to dying out due to a lack of carbon dioxide. <laughs> the more we can increase the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the safer life on this planet will be. For those of us who feel for the third world, the more we can increase the CO2 content, the faster their crops will grow. It is like giving them free fertilizer. Who amongst us would be so heartless to deny the third world that benefit at no cost to themselves. The federal government is that heartless. But then they don't care about Australians either. This fake problem of climate is distracting us from real problems. The first of which is that our oil self-sufficiency is declining rapidly. It is 40% now. By 2015, it will be down to 25%. We now import oil from as far away as Azerbaijan, the Congo, and Algeria. We are forced to rely upon their kindness to keep our farms and factories running. It need not be like that. We could make our own transport fuels from coal here in Australia and keep the money we pay for them in Australia. But that won't happen while the carbon tax lives. As a scientist, what saddens me is that most of our scientific institutions have failed in their duty to protect and serve the Australian people. The CSIRO, the Bureau of Meteorology, the universities have all failed us. And then there are the institutions that actively and purposefully and very treacherously conspire against us. Chief of which is the ABC. Yeah which has ceaselessly promoted this bizarre cult of carbon. 
the next government will inherit a lot of debt. To pay off that debt as quickly as possible, sacrifices will have to be made. The easiest sacrifice to make will be to shut down the ABC. The ABC is well past its due by date. It sees Australia through its perverted lens of self-loathing. None who love this country will weep for it. Just as this government did not weep for the cement workers who have already lost their jobs due to the carbon tax. Ideally, there could be a very good outcome from this carbon tax debacle. It is not enough to merely put things back the way they were before this particular lot of Australia haters, our current federal government, came along. We must use this opportunity, your righteous anger, to unleash the furies on those who failed us and those who conspired against us. There are so many wrongs that need to be righted if we are to make Australia the earthly paradise it should be. So let's right those wrongs. Let's have a good clean out. It requires effort on your part. Coming here today is only the beginning. Many of you are shareholders and many of the companies you are invested in have sold their souls to get their snouts deeper into the carbon trough. Make their lives hell. They deserve it. Hound the directors until they recant. As for any politicians who have ever believed in global warming or supported the carbon tax, or a carbon constrained economy. There is no hope for them. They are either too stupid or incompetent to be taken seriously. Merely recanting at this late stage isn't enough. Make their lives hell, just as they wished a diminished life on you. Australia will soon face some big challenges as the world enters one of its most turbulent periods. Just maintaining our standard of living in the face of those challenges will require a lot of rigour. We will only get the required level of rigour if, if we demand it. Firstly of ourselves and then of the politicians we choose to represent us. Even then, keeping Australia safe and secure and happy will take our eternal vigilance. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.